I've noticed a trend in the church that's troubling. We have some prominent members, historians, and celebrities that have immersed themselves in antagonistic sources about the church and its history, and then end up having a faith crisis. Some pull out of it, but remain jaded about certain subjects. Some leave and come back, bringing their incomplete or incorrect views about these subjects with them, wrapped in a testimony. Others never make it back, even when the charge that originally caused them to doubt has been disproven. After seeing these stories, I felt impressed to share an experience with you that my mother had many years ago, in the hope that it will be as helpful to you as it has been to me as you navigate through sources of information about the church. My mother converted to the church in her early 20s. She was a voracious reader who set to work learning all the restored doctrines of the church like a starving man who had just sat down to a Thanksgiving feast. She loved learning and had double majored in college in both music and political science. After joining the church, my my mother taught my widowed grandmother, who also joined the church. A few years later, my grandmother was recruited by an apostate polygamist group in Utah who preyed upon lonely women looking for belonging. My newly converted grandmother's lack of spiritual maturity also made her an easy target. My mother was living in a different state at the time and had no idea what was happening until my grandmother confessed that she had been excommunicated. My mother began to lovingly reason with her by letter and phone to help her see the falsehoods of this group. My grandmother's group still claimed to believe in Joseph Smith the Book of Mormon, and the Church, but taught that they were living a higher law the rest of the Church could not live. They taught that although they had been excommunicated, they were really still members, but just couldn't be acknowledged publicly as such by church leaders. In the process of these discussions, my grandmother would send books and articles to my mother to prove her beliefs. These included obscure historical documents, copies of journals, unpublished revelations, and dissertations from academic sources friendly to her group. My mother would read them, comparing them to the scriptures and other church sources, and then would send back point-by-point -point explanations of how they were not in tune with revealed truth. This went on for months and months, as my mother kept hoping that one of her carefully researched answers would finally be the one that clicked, and my grandmother would see that she had been deceived. One night, during this process, my mother had a dream. In the dream, she was outside hanging the laundry on the clothesline, when she saw a huge wave of water coming towards her and the house. She quickly ran inside and closed the doors and windows. Soon the wave reached the house and surrounded it. She saw the water rising up around the house, and soon the water level rose higher than the windows and continued until it covered the roof. Then she looked up and saw water dripping from the ceiling into the house. She awoke from her dream, and the interpretation came immediately. It was this. You can't keep exposing yourself to all these books and articles with these false doctrines and ideas without it eventually getting in. She felt very strongly that she should immediately stop corresponding with my grandmother about these subjects. She followed the warning and told my grandmother that she would no longer be reading and discussing these subjects with her, and that their interactions and communications would need to be limited to family news and non-doctrinal discussions. My mother followed this warning for the rest of her life. She passed away an active and faithful member in 2005. My grandmother remained an active part of her polygamous group until she passed away in 2019 at the age of 104. This warning has application for every member of the church. If we expose ourselves constantly to false teachings, antagonistic opinions, and enemies of the truth, even with the intention of being better able to refute their arguments, like my mother did, we open ourselves to the possibility that some of these falsehoods will eventually get in. Once in, they can spread like a cancer, if not rejected and replaced with high doses of the truth and the Holy Ghost. I have seen members who have dabbled in these waters, who ended up getting swept out to the sea of apostasy, losing their testimonies and their faith. May we heed this dream with a warning, and keep ourselves and our friends and families safe from the corrupt communications that can threaten our faith. And now you understand. Pass it on. Thanks for watching.